Hey, hello everyone, this is Bill Griffin. Welcome to Different Tech Podcast. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. I really appreciate you watching and your support, your encouragement. New episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today I want to talk about the January 6th uh, hearings that have been on primetime television and so forth and so on. I haven't watched any of it. I'm surprised that anybody would watch it uh, for several different reasons. Uh, and I want to get into those, but these wouldn't happen if it weren't for Liz Cheney. I'm doing this as of August 23rd, 2022, and last week Liz Cheney was soundly defeated, and I'd like to show you some numbers uh, from that primary. So this is the Republican uh, primary. One seat in the state of uh, Wyoming, sparse population, not only one seat. Uh, Harriet Hageman defeats Liz Cheney 663 to 28.9%. But the thing I'd like for you to look at is the raw vote total for Liz Cheney's 49,316. Now, if you look at the Democrat primary, uh, Liz Cheney lost in Republican primary. Uh, Lynette Grable has 4,500 votes, and that compares to Liz Cheney's 49,000 votes. But look at the uh, return in the 2020 general election. Liz Cheney defeats Lynette Grable two years ago. Lynette Grable has 66,000 votes. So of those 66,000 votes that voted for the Democrat, Liz Cheney won handily uh, in this general election. Many of those people had, I think, had to vote for Liz Cheney. So if it were a true Republican prime, if it had only been Republican voters, she would have gotten beat far, far worse than she did. There were two comments that she made, and uh, this does have to do with January 6th because this kind of shows you the mindset. Liz Cheney, these January 6th hearings wouldn't happen if it weren't for Liz Cheney. Uh, the Democrats could not have pulled this off without peeling off a, a couple of Republicans. Even as one-sided as it is, they can claim that it's fair because Liz Cheney, a, uh, a, a person the Democrats have uh, not liked for a long, long time, the Cheney family has been often despised by people on the left. Now they seem to love her because she has this grudge with Donald Trump. She claims that she will do whatever it will take. I don't know what that means. Whatever it will take to stop Donald Trump from being becoming president. I don't know if that includes unethical actions, illegal, criminal actions on her part. Who knows? She's prone to make these sorts of statements when it comes to, for example, uh, she said, let's have all options on the table when it comes to dealing with Russia invading Ukraine, for example. I think she's quite delusional when she's asked uh, about running for president. She actually is considering it. Um, I'll never be an NBA basketball player, and she will never be president. Back to the January 6th hearings. If you watch these, I... I can't help but feel a little sorry for you because you really should find something else to do. They have zero value. They're not entertaining. You're not going to learn anything. And I'll explain why. First reason is it's a congressional hearing. And I'm going to show you a clip of what I mean by that. This, In this case, both sides are being uh, represented. So I'm going to show you a clip on it. This is a hearing on online hate speech in the House of Representatives. The chair is Jerry Nadler, and this is Ted Lieu talking about a statement or repeating a statement that's taken out of context that's made by Candace Owens. They're discussing a white nationalism, I think, and uh, Ted Lieu is speaking to Candace Owens, who is not a Caucasian person. Ms. Owens said, quote, if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. So when people try to legitimize Adolf Hitler, does that feed into white nationalist ideology? 
So Ted Lou takes this out of context. He's mean-spirited. He'll do anything to malign a uh, political opponent. There's nothing about him that <laughs> displays a, a, any sort of fairness or benefit of doubt or reason. It's He's trying to get an emotional reaction from the people listening. Oh my gosh, she, Candace Owens, is a sympathizer with Nazis, of all things. It's a ridiculous assertion, but this is Ted Lou. This is what he does. The next clip is uh, Candace Owens' response and Jerry Nadler from the Democrat from New York who's chairing this hearing. It's pretty easy to find on YouTube. Just uh, type in the name of the name of the players and it's pretty easy to see it to that yes um i think it's pretty apparent that uh, mr Liu believes that black people are stupid and will not f uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety he purposely presented an extract an extracted witness, clip the witness absent. will suspend for a moment it is not proper to refer disparagingly or with, to a member of the committee uh, the witness will not do that again witness may continue Sure, even though I was called despicable. Um, Witness may not refer to a member of the committee as stupid. I didn't refer to him as stupid. That's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. You, you didn't listen to what I said. May I continue? Please. So you see Jerry Nadler interrupts Candace Owens. Uh, his, Candace Owens says, uh, and she's correct, she does not say anything disparaging about Ted Lou. Uh, I will. He's, he's a mean-spirited person who is clearly willing to lie and uh, take things out of context and try to deceive people. Uh, but Jerry Nadler, uh, he, he, look at his body language. He wasn't listening, but he's also, his body language is saying, why should I listen? But he's trying to buttress support Ted Lou, who's a truly sleazy politician who is a leftist extremist. My point in showing these clips is that these uh, hearings are not very often very serious. Many times the, when the representative is turned to question, they don't ask any questions. They just talk for their, the amount of time that they're allotted. These things are just not very serious. So now we have this January 6th committee, which is uh, totally one-sided. So you combine a congressional hearing, which typically aren't very serious anyway, along with the fact that it's one-sided, and why would you want to why would you want to watch it or give it any sort of credence whatsoever? This is a clip of a gentleman who is running uh, for Congress. His name uh, that I did an interview with. His name is Mike Ford. He is in Georgia's uh, ninth district, running against the Republican Andrew Clyde, who's the incumbent. It's long odds, very long odds for him to defeat Andrew Clyde. So this is he and I, and he brings up January 6th. I didn't in this interview, and so we talk about it. You, just since you brought that up, the, these hearings they're, they're, that they were having regarding January 6th, they're pretty, well, they're one-sided. Are you, are, you, are you okay with that? Well, first of all, I don't agree with your premise. You don't think they're one-sided? No, I think I think that they are. Well, what's really, the other side? I don't know that there's an other side to truth. Either it's true or it isn't true. Facts are either correct or they're not facts. So Mr. Ford is an attorney, and I'm, I'm pretty surprised that he would think any sort of proceeding where you're trying to find the truth, and it's not important to hear what the other side has to say. So he clearly does not, I don't think he thinks that's necessary. Uh, I was very surprised to hear this. But the Liz Cheney's of the world, and maybe Mr. Ford falls in that category, he's insisting that it's not one-sided. They could uh, present opposing evidence if they wanted to. And this clearly was not the way that this went down at all. Judges don't get to tell defendants, uh, or prosecutors, I should say, uh, we don't really have a judge in a congressional hearing of someone that's calling the balls and strikes, the way making rulings and how the proceedings are going to go. You basically have the prosecution telling the defense who their attorneys are going to be. Uh, that's how this committee came about. This is a little later in the interview. 
Well, it just it seems to me that I mean, there's always two sides to a story, and I'm, I'm there's sorry. only the the only per, the only people that are participating in the hearing is it's one side. I mean, that's well, with all due respect to my friends in the media, and I'm going to just throw you in there with them. There's no such thing as two sides to the truth. I'm sorry. There's no such thing as that. That's nonsense. Even, even four and five-year-olds understand that. Oftentimes when the prosecution presents their case and then the defense presents their case, the defense actually buttresses or supports the prosecution's case. So it's very important to hear hear both sides of the story. But that is not what is happening here. The other thing that I think is very interesting about this, and the reason I wouldn't I haven't spent any time watching, don't understand why anybody would watch these January 6 hearings, is the, if the shoe were on the other foot, do you, don't you think the Democrats would think that they were these, this was a show trial, a kangaroo court? Of course they would. So that's the third reason I think that these things just have zero value. A few, another thing I'd like to mention is that there have been thousands of hours of broadcast time devoted to the Russia collusion hoax, if you remember. There's no probable cause to name a special prosecutor uh, in the first place. There's zero, zero evidence to support doing that. Then you have the two impeachments of Donald Trump. There is no probable cause for either one of those impeachments to take place. And if you're going to go down the road of impeachment, and this is another reason that people don't trust uh, these January 6 hearings, if, if you're going to go down the road of the impeachment, you, in my opinion, you ought to have the votes pretty much locked in before you if your evidence is that strong, wouldn't that wouldn't seventy five percent of the populace be in favor of impeaching? Why would you do this with just a simple majority? Think about trying to try someone and get a unanimous verdict. You're not. You have to get a unanimous verdict. That evidence has to be pretty strong. There wasn't that type of evidence. This was always very tenuous. I don't even think there was probable cause to do any sort of investigation. But this happens a lot in Washington. There are two cases uh, that uh, come to mind as far as criminal cases. And impeachment hearings and what they're trying to do to Donald Trump really requires criminal conduct. And without certain evidence that criminal conduct existed, you don't have anything. There's nothing to go after. The first case is a George Zimmerman case. Every law, TV lawyer was saying there was going to be a conviction on the eve of the verdict. There was no evidence uh, to support. Had Trayvon Martin survived, the gunshot came from Zimmerman's weapon, more likely he'd be in prison now because he would, he would probably have been found guilty of, what, of trying to beat uh, George Zimmerman to death. And nobody would have ever heard about it. He wouldn't have been in the news and so forth and so on. The other case is the Rittenhouse case. If you recall, during the trial, the, the judge ruled that the, the prosecution could not refer to the people, that the assailants, as it turned out to be. They could be referred to as victims. And there's a good reason for this. So I had another interview with a, a gentleman who's written a few columns, and uh, we talk about this. Two of them weren't. How does the word victim, the, the jury is not aware of, of them, um, they shouldn't be aware, and I'm presuming they weren't aware that the judge made this ruling. So how is that, how does that damage the, the prosecution's ability to obtain a conviction by barring that word? Well, how do they refer to the people that were, frankly, murdered by Rittenhouse if they don't call them victims? 
they can, you know, the, the judge implied they should call them rioters. I mean, and that's, that's not fair to the people who were murdered. So, you know, well, yes, but the murders aren't on trial. I mean, the people that were mur- the people that were shot were not, uh, they weren't on trial. No, but justice is on trial and justice needs to be balanced. And in this case, the judge was not balanced. So if you notice, he uses the term, the people were murdered. But that's the point of the trial to determine whether they were, they were murdered or whether Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense. This is the problem when you don't have, don't have a mindset of innocent until proven guilty. People deserve the benefit of the doubt. Treat others as others would treat you. To bar Donald Trump from running for office again, that's what this committee is after. That's what Liz Cheney's after. You need criminal conduct. There isn't any. And that's what makes it so ridiculous what's going on with the the recent raid that the uh, FBI did on Trump's home because uh, you really, after all of these uh, fishing expeditions, because that's what they are, there's no, there's no criminal conduct that's been presented to the American people so that they could get behind such a movement as an impeachment. And the January 6th is a replay of the second impeachment hearings. So that's my, uh, that's my take on this. I don't know why anybody watches this except folks that really despise Donald Trump and they really get something, uh, they get some sort of emotional gratification out of watching these hearings. That's the only thing that I can figure. So that's my take on the January 6th hearings. I really appreciate you watching. Please, if you like this content, subscribe, like, share, comment. Thanks for watching.